In this video, we're gonna talk all about reflections. So a reflection is a rigid motion that basically takes a pre-image and flips it over a line or point. And we're gonna talk about line reflections specifically today. So if we take a look at the diagram here, a reflection is shown. And if we're asked to describe what a reflection is, it's basically a flip or mirror image. In this diagram here, the pre-image has been reflected over the x-axis. And the way we could tell that is if we zoom in on the picture, pick any corresponding point from the pre-image and the image. So let's say I pick B and B prime, we're looking for what's right in the middle of it. So B to the x-axis is three units. The x-axis to B prime is three units. So we know the x-axis is the line of reflection. It also asks us, does the orientation of the letters, that means the order of the letters, in a clockwise rotation stay the same from the pre-image to the image? And the answer to that is no. So orientation is not preserved under a, a reflection. So rigid motions preserve distance and angle measure, but not all rigid motions preserve orientation. So here's what orientation is. If I take a look at the pre-image to start, and I start with A, if I go in a clockwise motion, I'm going from A to B to C. But if I now look at the image and start with A and do a clockwise rotation, I'm going from A to C to B. It's not the same order anymore. So it was A, B, C. Now it's A, C, B. That means the orientation has changed. Therefore, it's not preserved. Okay. So we're going to take a look at some main line reflections that you're going to see. So first up, number one, A is five, four. We want to find A prime after a reflection over the X axis. So if I look at this picture here, I see that A is four units above the X axis. So I'm going to go four units below and that's where A prime is. So in this case, A was five, four and it became five, negative four. So if we're asked to come up with a shortcut rule for this, let's think about what happened. The X value stayed the same. The Y value was negated. So X, Y became X, negative Y. So these shortcut rules we are going to be able to use to get the coordinates of an image without actually having a graph and counting boxes. We could do the same thing for a reflection over the Y axis. If I look here, A to the Y axis is five units. If I go five units the other way, that's where A prime lands. So A was five, four. A prime, after the reflection over the Y axis, became negative five, four. And we can see now in this example that the X coordinate was negated. So X, Y becomes negative X, positive Y. Let's take a look at a couple others. Number three, if A is five, four, find A prime after a reflection over the line Y equals X. So let's think about first what Y equals X looks like. It's a diagonal line that has a slope of one and it has a Y intercept of zero. So since the line is diagonal, when we count the boxes, we're gonna actually count them diagonal here. So if I zoom in here, a to the line is half a box. So I'm gonna go half a box the other way and that's where A prime is. Okay. And I'm gonna actually move my line here a little bit just so you can see it better. So A to the line is half a box. The line to A prime is gonna be half a box. So A was five, four. After the reflection over Y equals X, it became four, five and we can see that our coordinates basically flip spots. So x, y would become y, x. We switch the coordinates. Okay. One thing to just take note of here is that the line of reflection and the line segment that connects the pre-image and image are always going to be perpendicular to each other. So you could see right in here, we would have a little right angle, and that would have worked on the previous examples too. If I take a look at, let's say number one here, we can see the line of reflection and that line segment are in fact perpendicular. All right, we have one more example that has a shortcut rule, which is when we reflect over y equals negative x. So that means that the line has a slope of negative one now, 
but also it has a y-intercept of zero again. So just like the previous example, we're going to count boxes diagonally. It's just a little trickier in this one because A is not as close to the line. In number three, A was very close, right? It was half a box diagonally. But I'm gonna still count diagonally, so I'm gonna start at A. This is one diagonal box. Two, three, four, and a half. So I can see, okay, that distance is four and a half. I need to put a prime on the other side, four and a half boxes. So I'm gonna finish this half first. So there's a half. And now I'm gonna have, this is one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. So here's my coordinate of a prime. So let's take a look what happened. A was five, four. A prime after a reflection over y equals negative x became negative four, negative five. So not only did the coordinates switch, but they were also negated. So x, y becomes negative y, negative x. And those are our four main shortcut rules that we're going to see for line reflections. Now it is possible you are given a question that asks you to reflect over a different line. Um, and in particular, common ones are horizontal and vertical. So we're going to see that in number five. Number five gives us five, four again, but we want to reflect over y equals three. So y equals three is a horizontal line at three. And the reason the equation of this line is y equals three is because every point on this line, you can pick any one as just like a, a sample here. But any point on that line has a y value of 3. So I can see that a is one box above. So I know a prime is going to be one box below. And that means my coordinates of my answer for a prime are going to be 5, 2. Okay. If we take a, a, a second to just think about this for a second, our y coordinate of the pre-image was 4. The y coordinate of the image is 2. What number is in the middle of four and two? And that's our y equals three. That was our line of reflection. All right, and for number six, we're gonna do another reflection, but this time over x equals one. That's a vertical line because pick any point on that line that you want. It has an x value of one. So in this case, a is four boxes to the right. So I'm gonna go four boxes to the left and that's where a prime is. So my answer to number six, a prime looks like it's negative three comma four. So let's do that quick little check again. If I look at the x coordinate of the pre-image, it's five. The x coordinate of the image is negative three. What value is right in the middle? That's x equals one, and that's our line of reflection. All right. Two more examples here. For number seven, we're gonna try and practice just using those shortcut rules because they are helpful to memorize. They're not mandatory, you can always graph, um, but it does help speed things along. So P, two negative one after reflection in the Y axis, that means we negate the X value, negative two, negative one. For Q prime, we're going to reflect over Y equals X, that means switch the coordinates. And I'm basically just referring to our shortcut rules that we came up with earlier to get these answers. C, R negative 10, negative six after a reflection over the X axis, that means negate the Y value. So negative 10, six. D, S seven, seven after a reflection, Y equals negative X. That means that coordinate is going to be negated and flipped. Now it happens to be that those two coordinates were the same here, seven and seven, so it doesn't really look like they're flipped, but we are in fact flipping them. And finally for E, I get a translation, uh, sorry, a T, zero, five, after a reflection, X equals zero. So when I take a look at this, X equals zero was not one of our shortcut rules, but that is the same thing as the Y axis. And that means we're gonna negate our X value. So zero can't really be negated. So in this case, T prime is also zero five. All right, and for our last question, we're going to just plot and state the coordinates of P prime, Q prime, R prime, S prime, the image of PQRS after reflection over the X axis. So pick a point to start with, let's say I start with P, 
it's two boxes above the x-axis. Count two boxes below. That's P prime. And I'm going to write our coordinates as we go here. All right, Q is three boxes below the x-axis, so now go three boxes above. So Q prime has coordinates 10, 3. R is six boxes below the x-axis, so I'm going to go six boxes above. That makes the coordinates of R prime 7, 6. And S is one box below, so we're going to go one box above. That means S prime is going to be 2, comma 1. So to finish this off, we are just going to connect the four points of the image. And now we have plotted and stated the coordinates of P prime, Q prime, R prime, S prime. Hopefully this video helped you understand how to work with line reflections.